All right, so now we're going to talk about the Capture API, which can be quite similar to the Camera API. Uh, there are a few big differences, though. For one, the Capture API can capture not only images, but also video and audio. Um, and the Capture API is also based on the W3C Media Capture API, and the Camera API is not. Um, it's been said that the camera API is still only is mainly around for backward compatibility issues um, with older applications. All right, so let's get into some coding. Uh, this is just going to be a very pretty simple script that's going to allow us to take a picture and upload that picture onto a remote server. Uh, we're just have going to have a um, a PHP file with two lines, uh, basically just moving the image from the temporary. Uh, source to the remote source. So I'm going to paste in my HTML structure and all we're going to have in the body is a button. So we're going to have button, it's going to have an on click handler that goes to the take picture function. Okay. So that's all we need for our, our HTML. Now we need to create the take picture function. So up between our script tags, we're going to say uh, function take picture. And we're going to say navigator dot device dot capture dot capture image all right so we could also do capture video or capture audio uh, as well so this is going to take a couple callbacks I'll say capture success and we'll say capture error and it can also take a couple options we could say limit to uh, and and what that means is that the API will let us um, take two images in one API call so that's that's another difference between the camera API but we're just going to leave that uh, the default is one so I want to keep this simple uh, so the next thing we need to do is we want to create the capture success function Okay, and the capture success is going to take a parameter called media files. All right, and in here we're going to say uh, we're going to do a loop. So variable uh, variable i and len. So we're declaring these two variables i and len, and we're going to say for Uh, for i is equal to zero. Um, I'm sorry, I need a comma. Uh, len is equal to media files dot length. Sorry, length. Media files dot length. Um, and we're going to say i is less than len and i um, plus equals one so we're going to increment by one after every iteration so what we're doing is we're setting i to zero we're setting len to the length of the file so how, however many files there are uh, and then we're saying as long as i is less than the amount of files then we're going to do whatever we're going to do in this loop and we're also going to increment by one after every iteration so in the loop we want to call the upload file function and in that we're going to put in media files and I alright so that that's how we make uh, how we can upload multiple images 
in one single API call. Alright, so the next thing we want to create is the, the error. So we'll say uh, function capture error. And that's going to take an error object. And let's see, we'll say we'll create a variable called message. Um, we'll call it error message. And that'll just be a message. We'll say uh, an error has occurred. Um, and then we're just going to tack on, we're going to concatenate on the error code. So error.code. And then we're going to say navigator. I can't type today. Uh, navigator dot notification dot alert so we're just using the the devices internal notification system her message no and for right here we'll just say oh no this is just a dialogue box all right so that's all we're going to do for the error uh, so the last thing we need to do here is create the upload file function, which gets called right here. Okay, so function upload file, and that's going to take the file as a parameter, and we're going to say variable ft. Now we need what we need to do here is create a new file transfer object so that we can uh, transfer the file to a remote server. So we're going to say new file transfer and path media file dot full path and name equals media file dot name and you can look up all these objects and methods and properties um, on the capture api documentation page at docs.phonegap.com all right so what do we want to do now now we want to take the um, file transfer object let's say ft dot upload and we have a bit of code to write in here. So I'm going to make it so we can read it. So we need to say path. Um, and now we want the location of the remote server. So mine's going to be HTTP uh, techguystaging.com slash test slash upload.php so that's the file that I'm gonna submit to or upload to and I'm gonna put in a function here with the result uh, I don't want that one second all right so in here, uh, I'm just going to console log a success. So we'll say console.log. We'll say file upload success. All right. And then we'll do function. Oh, function error. And we'll do a console.log file upload failed. Oops, we need our quotes there. Okay. And finally, actually, we need a comma right here in here. And then we're just going to say 
file name. Whoop. File name, name. Okay, so that's the name variable that's coming from here. And it doesn't really matter because we're going to change the name of the file in the PHP script. All right. Now let's just move this. All right, so all this is wrapped up in within the parameters of the ft.upload function. So it's pretty much the path. Um, if we have a result, if we have an error, and then the file name. So let me just look everything over. And I also just want to add just a little bit, a tiny bit of styling for the button. Uh, we're just going to say button. Border radius, and we'll say border of two pixels. Whoop. Uh, dark gray border. Uh, solid and we'll say padding 5 pixels 10 pixels all right good enough so let's save this and we can let's just take a look at it in the browser even though we can't use it in the browser because we don't have a, a camera so we just have a take picture button and obviously it's not going to do anything because this isn't a real device with a real camera so now what I want to do is create the PHP script and I'm going to open up FileZilla and go to my st staging site and I'm going to go to my public HTML and I have a test folder and I'm going to create a new folder called upload and that's where I want my files to go my images and I'm going to create a new file called upload.php and I'm just going to bring this file onto my desktop I'll open it with notepad plus plus and we just need to add a few lines so it's fine if you don't understand any PHP uh, I'm just gonna create a variable called new image name alright because we're gonna rename the image because we want uh, we want unique names for all of our images and I'm actually gonna tack the date and time onto the image that way that the lo they'll always be unique uh, and we will also use a, a function called unique ID. So I'm going to say um, new image name is going to be image underscore. Uh, and we're going to concatenate. So in JavaScript, when, when we're going to concatenate onto a string, we use a plus sign. In PHP, we use a dot. Okay. And we're going to use the date function. And we're going to put some parameters in here for formatting it. Um, we're going to say we want the year, uh, month, um, day, we want hour, uh, seconds. All right, so that looks good. That's going to format the date. Uh, and then we're going to concatenate back out of here. And we want an underscore. And we're going to concatenate again, and we're going to call this function uh, unique. What is it? U N I Q I D. So that'll give us a unique ID, and then we're going to concatenate again, and we're going to put uh, this is it's going to be a JPEG. All right. 
So now what we want to do is when you upload a file to a PHP script, uh, it gets stored in a temporary place and you want to move the file to a permanent location and you do that with the function uh, move uploaded file. So the file when it comes in, when we upload it to the script, it's going to come in the files array or the file super, super global array. Um, and we're going to have some brackets and want file. And it's going to have a temporary name. All right, so file temp name so that's the first parameter and the second parameter is where we want to move it to so I'm gonna have it in my and this is going to be a um, absolute directory so mine is home oh, what the hell's going on on my server it's gonna be home slash tech guy 4 slash public HTML slash test slash upload and that's that upload folder that I, I showed you that I created. Let me make this a little wider. Alright, so now after that we want to concatenate the new name. So we just do a dot and then we'll say new image name. Okay. All right, so that should be it. I'm gonna save this and re-upload it. So when we use our app, the images should get uploaded to this directory. All right, so I'm gonna to have to create another video so that you can see me install the app and then take the picture. So let's see, now we wanna actually upload our files to our Git repository. So make sure you're in your test app directory or wherever you're developing. Uh, we're going to say git add all. We'll say git commit am commit and then git push and then my credentials. Okay, so now we can go to phone build. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, it's not phone build, it's build dot phone gap. And I'm logged in as on it. Actually, no, this is the right account. Support, yeah. All right, so I'm going to update the code by pulling from the latest repository. Click on that. Now we have to wait for our APK file. All right, so if we click on APK, We can download it. We'll just replace this one. And to get it on the device, my device is plugged in. So if I go to a computer, actually, it's not plugged in. Okay, there's my device. And I'm going to go to the Android folder. And that's where I want to put that file. So where did I put it? Downloads. Copy that. Paste it in there. All right. So now I just have to go into my device and go to the APK installer, install it, and then we can run it. And I'll do that in the next video.